There we go. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today and it will be posted to our archives uh, later for you to watch at your convenience. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share uh, with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska. So we provide services and training and resources and grants to all types of libraries in the state. So we also will um, do shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, K-12, corrections, museums, archives, um, bleh, on and on. Uh, really our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. We do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, um, all sorts of things. We have, um, as I said earlier, we do record the show. If you do have any questions here during the live show, please type, you can type into the questions section of the GoToWebinar interface. I'm monitoring that here and I'll grab all your questions for our presenter today. Um, I will do my, my uh, usual reminder. Uh, we are recording and our archive um, will be posted to the Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel for our archives. So um, anything you say will be saved and posted to the internet for posterity. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Never had any trouble with that, but I just like make sure everyone knows what's going on. <laughs> uh, we do have, um, sometimes we do shows here with Nebraska Library Commission staff talking about things and services and whatnot we're doing through the commission, but we begin, bring in guest speakers sometimes. And with us today is Robin Hastings, who is from uh, Neckles, as you can see here, Northeast Kansas Library System. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, Krista, and everyone else. Yeah, she's a friend and colleague of mine, and she's been on the show uh, quite a few times over the years. Um, she was just a, a month or so ago here with us, um, but she's back again to talk about uh, training new library directors. Apple in Kansas, very appropriate name, obviously, on purpose. <laughs> um, and so if you're a new director, or maybe not even new, just a director, live director. Um, some of these things could be useful for you. So I'll just hand it over to you, uh, Robin, to tell us all about Apple in Kansas. All right. Well, thank you, Krista. Um, I just have uh, a little story about Apple. It, it started many years ago, actually, as a completely different program and has uh, evolved into what will be next year, uh, which is yet another completely different program. So. Um, just in case you guys, um, oops, next, there we go, sorry. <laughs> I can work technology, really. Uh, just in case you guys have questions, uh, my name is Robin. As, as Krista said, my email address is rhastingsatnichols.org, and I'm happy to answer questions or um, comments, take anything uh, uh, you guys have. So, all right. So Apple, Apple stands for Applied Public Library Education. The only way we can actually get the acronym to work is by uh, making those first two letters, the AP uh, um, <laughs> capitalized. Mm -hmm. but, you know, that's, that's what happened. Um, it is basically, the idea is that new directors in, in Kansas as, as everywhere else, uh, quite often, I mean, sometimes new directors are new to libraries. This is their first library job. Um, sometimes they have uh, a little bit of library experience. Sometimes they have an MLS, but whatever the level of, of experience and education they have, uh, we do things differently in Kansas sometimes. And so it's, uh, it's a good idea, we thought, to have a educational program that explained kind of how budgeting works in Kansas and, and all the different um, specific things. So at least in, in our system, and, and I will uh, take a moment now to mention Kansas has uh, a state library, which is like the Nebraska Library Commission, um, but we also have seven regional library systems. My system is the one closest to Nebraska, 
Um, so uh, Northeast Kansas, uh, Nebraska, and Missouri are our north and, and uh, eastern borders. And then we go down to Richmond, Kansas, and over to Topeka for southern and western borders. And so um, the way it has worked is we have uh, we have decided that despite whatever education, whatever experience you have, we invite all new library directors to go to Apple. Different uh, systems manage it differently. We have different uh, requirements and uh, and you know the kind of categories we're looking for. Um, some people don't require the MLS folks to do it. We do in in Nichols, but uh, regardless beyond the education this is also a chance for new directors to meet peers uh, mm -hmm. and so they have a chance to network with people who are in their same situation all across kansas and they have somebody that they've met and maybe they've um, they've had a, a nice conversation with a couple of times and they feel comfortable picking up the phone and calling and saying listen this is what's happening in my library what's going on in yours how do you, have you ever dealt with this you know that kind of thing and and we have found um, I'll talk a little bit in a, in a bit about uh, our surveying project that we had uh, but we have found that that has been a really useful part of the whole Apple thing so we did not start off however with Apple um, those are supposed to be books but I stretched out too long sorry um, we did uh, begin uh, new director training uh, years ago, 1989, I believe, was the first year of a program called K Place, and that was done as a um, combination, uh, a cooperation between Emporia State, the SLIM program, and the State Library. And so, librarians took a week, went to SLIM, um, stayed in the dorms uh, at Emporia State, and spent a week learning about their new job. They did this three years running. Um, this was a three-year program. When you were done with all three weeks, uh, each year you graduated. Um, so that was intensive. Um, it required a big, uh, a big commitment. Um, it said uh, it takes, it used to take place in May. And by the time they graduated, after their three years, they'd received 90 hours of um, high quality training in wow. community analysis, community information access, technology, budgeting, personnel management. Sorry, I'm recovering from a cold, so every now and then I'm getting a little snotty, I apologize. Mm -hmm. um, trustee development, short and long range planning, organizational projects. Apologies. So they had to do this every year for three years? To every year for three years. They had product. the first year and then the sophomore year and then the junior year and then they, they graduated. So, um, so yeah, this was a, a big project, but it, it's, it's hard, um, mm -hmm. first off, to get folks to be able to commit to a week, um, much less a week for three years running. Mm -hmm. And um, it required a lot of... of commitment. It also required that librarians stay in place for three years, which we are finding um, is an issue as yes. people move around. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in 2013, see, I came to Nichols in 2012, uh, November of 2012, and in April of 2013, Apple started. So I was maybe not in the very first discussions of the Apple program, but I came in um, and, and when I sat down, I was told I was doing the technology module. So <laughs> that was, uh, I was like, oh yeah, okay, that's cool. <laughs> um, so Apple began in 2013 as a, um, as a program to kind of take up where K-Place left off, but be less, um, be less commitment uh, of a commitment that mm -hmm. it was, the way we work it now is it is a single day, sort of from noon one day to noon the next day, retreat at the Rock Springs 4-H Ranch in um, Junction City, just south of Junction City, Kansas. And we spend that day um, getting to know one another. We have a, a speaker come in who talks about how to be a great director. Um, they kind of get things started, get things kicked off. We have meals with one another. We have um, in the evenings, uh, there's a where we stay is a 
it's not the camping part of the 4-H thing. It's uh, the leadership lodge. So we have, you know, beds and showers and linens and and uh, uh, all the comforts of home. But we also have couches and tables in the middle. And so we can sit and talk and uh, share information and uh, and just really get to know one another in person. And so that's our kind of our kickoff for the program. And then after that, there are monthly webinars. And um, I'm going to talk about those in just a second. And then we try to get together at the KLA, um, the Kansas Library Association uh, conference, which happens in late November, early or late October, early November. Um, this year, it's very early November, first three days of the month. And then um, we used to have a, instead of that, when KLA was uh, um, during pandemic times, uh, we would have a online meeting. Um, we, If people wanted to get together, they could go to Salina, uh, Kansas, and we would meet at the library there, but most of it was online because lots of, uh, uh, lots of issues with the pandemic. So um, we get students from all across Kansas. Um, six of the seven uh, regional systems will um, send people. We have each of them have five spots. Where our our limitation is really those beds at the leadership lodge at the uh, Rock Springs because we have to be able to fit all of the staff and all of the students and there's a limited number of beds so what we do is each each system gets five spots uh, however some of our westernmost systems don't always have five people so there's a little bit of horse trading one year Nichols sent nine people so yeah uh, the year that uh, I took this picture on the uh, on the left here we only had three uh, for our our class that year, it was a smaller class. Uh, the picture on the right is kind of the whole, um, the whole group, well, half of the whole group, I guess, probably, with Sandy Nelson. She started our, um, being our, our keynote speaker uh, for years. She, she came and she talked about how to be a great director. And then we used Judy Calhoun from um, Southeast Kansas or Southeast Oklahoma um, Regional System. And uh, this year we're going to use Gina Millsap, formerly of the Topeka Shawnee Public Library. But this year we're doing a lot of changes. So nice. Yeah. Good names, people I know. <laughs> <laughs> we're uh, we're real excited about having um, having quality folks come up and talk about how to be a director these these are all folks who have been directors they've they've done the job and they're um they're ready and willing to come in and help our folks uh, learn how to be great directors right from the get-go so that's that's nice um normally what we do is i'm i'm kind of in charge of welcoming new directors to Nichols. so as soon as a, a director is hired um i will go out within usually a month, and meet with them, introduce them to Nichols, kind of give them an idea of what we can do, and chat with them about Apple. Uh, we used to, up until a year or so ago, um, as whenever you were hired, that next April you were eligible for Apple. And um, we're backing off on that a little bit now. If you're hired later in the year, we'll give you an extra year if you want. We don't make you start on Apple uh, while you're still very new at the job <laughs> um, because it, it is a monthly commitment with some homework and it's it's generally homework that is um, you know it's not busy work we try try very hard not to make it busy work um, but it's stuff that you have to do anyway um, like creating a budget or um, putting together a, a yearly um, report for your for your board or in the case of, of my uh, technology planning, um, putting together a technology plan for your library or dealing with your website, different things like that. So um, most of the folks who come, like I said, are new to the library world. They're, a lot of them, this is their very first library job and they've been hired as a director and they don't, um, 
they don't have the background. And so this, you can kind of see in the back of this picture on the right, um, there's several of our uh, consultants, Gail, Santi, and, and Richard. Um, everybody comes and shares and helps provide the support that these new directors need. So, um, click on the right spot. So the program itself, like I said, we start off at Rock Springs with the big kickoff uh, in the how to be a great director. And then every month we have, um, we have a different topic. It's a webinar, it's a one hour webinar. Uh, most of them have homework assigned associated with them, but not all. And um, we start off with library planning. So um, strategic planning, just kind of generally thinking about what your library's um, gonna be doing in the future. Uh, then we go with library technology, which is the one that I do. And I just try to kind of a basic, this is what you need to know to manage technology in your library kind of thing. Um, community awareness is the next one. And that's demographics and understanding what your community is, is made up of and what they need. Uh, we then finish up or follow that up with uh, customer service. Uh, which is something that I think uh, a lot of, of directors want to know a little bit more about how to make sure their staff are, are uh, providing service for their uh, uh, patrons. And then we do a session with um, Tiffany Henschel, who is a HR professional with Johnson County. Uh, she used to work for the Johnson County Public Library, so she's very familiar with libraries. And uh, this year, we actually, as a gift to Kansas, um, Apple opened that up. So instead of the um, 14, I think, people we have in the Apple class this year, we had 70 folks at that uh, at that webinar. So there is a, uh, a definite need for information about HR law and, um, and that kind of, of stuff. And it was very Kansas specific, but um, it was useful. <laughs> and uh, uh, for a lot of uh, a lot of folks, don't have an HR department to rely on. You know, these tiny libraries, they may have themselves and an assistant, and that's it. So um, there's that was a, a really useful, uh, a really useful thing. Then we'll have collection management, um, where we talk about how to buy books, where to buy books, how to get rid of books. <laughs> there's always, you know, weeding is an is an important part of the uh, collection. Must read, yes. <laughs> So, um, so we talk about that and then we go through library laws and that's kind of the statutory basis of libraries. Um, we go through what exactly, you know, how your bylaws work and what the statutes are that apply to you. And this is where it gets really Kansas specific for us. Mm -hmm. And then we can do that um, with the next session, which is budgeting. And that's usually a two hour session. That's just, it's a big topic. <laughs> um, and when it comes is about the time that libraries are supposed to be pulling together their budgets, kind of the beginning of the year, getting things ready. So we, we do that in January these days. Um, and then we finish up with youth services. So uh, things to do for the kids and teens in your library. And then the final month is a self-paced uh, session on ethics, librarian ethics. We use Pat Wagner's uh, series of, mm -hmm. she did five or six sessions, uh, 10 minutes on ethical topics. Uh, we ask them to uh, watch those sessions and then comment on the uh, discussion board. And we have kind of a discussion in the class about, on the discussion boards about, um, the ethical topics and things that they might not have known about. Uh, a lot of them are very, I tell you, the big the big thing that gets most people is um, not chatting about the books over the um, counter, not saying, mm -hmm. oh, this is a great book on divorce. I read it myself. You know, people don't necessarily <laughs> need to have that information. They don't right? I want that broadcasted to everyone else around. No, no, um, no. Yeah. yeah. So if, if the patron starts the conversation, grand, but it's just something we, people just haven't really thought about it. And so um, it is something that almost always makes an appearance on those, on those discussion boards. Um, we do have a Moodle 
instance, uh, Moodle is an open source version of like Canvas or a Blackboard, uh, which is that is just, what we use here at the, the Library Commission here as well. We use Moodle for our um, basic skills courses, which are for directors to learn um, the same thing as what you're talking about, how to do their job. <laughs> how to do the job, how to, how to do those basic skills. So uh, we make use of the Moodle by um, uh, the homework is assigned and, and turned in through Moodle. We have forums, uh, a couple, I know at least a couple of our sessions uh, the only homework is to post in the forum to have a, a conversation. And so mm -hmm. if people do that, they get credit. Um, and again, because each of the systems are different, we each kind of figure out what constitutes passing uh, and who, as, um, who is a successful graduate of the Apple program after that, uh, that March uh, ethics program. Um, each system lets me know who who has the uh, who has passed, and then we get certificates. And in Deckles, we uh, we go out to the board and we present the certificate to the the director in front of her board or his board, so that they know um, kind of what what their director has been learning and how hard they have worked over this last year to graduate. So that is. Uh, that's kind of how we run that pro project. Okay, I mentioned earlier that we have done some surveys. Uh, we do a survey every year at the end, just the same questions, just send it out by a survey monkey. But in 2020, um, about the time, uh, I think, I think the idea came before the pandemic, but since the pandemic uh, hit, it was a good time to send out stuff that didn't need to be done in person. Um, but in 2020, I sent out a survey to the 70 um, previous, 74, I think was the total number, uh, previous directors who had gone through Apple and um, asked them how useful Apple was to them now that they've been out of the program for a year or two. Um, or, or longer. Uh, there were a lot of great comments. Um, I learned so much and it's helped me with my job more than you could ever know. Uh, I'm thankful for the training. There were so many changes that needed to be implemented at my library and the Apple course gave me the information I needed to make those changes. They were not all entirely positive. Most of the homework was a waste of time. I have a library to run. I didn't have time to waste doing homework that was of no value. The library law and budget homework were all that were worth taking time to do. That's still good information for us. Mm -hmm. um, we can't uh, can't please everybody all the time, no. but we got a lot of good information like that. Um, and then for those who found that the content covered in Apple was still useful, uh, there were a few neutrals and a couple of disagrees, but mostly uh, agree and strongly agree were very um, very common. So we have uh, from 2013. I guess it technically be 2014 because the program ended that year, the 2013, the one we started in 2013. Um, so from 2014 on, we have yearly, uh, how did you feel about the, the program surveys? And then in 2020, we did this big kind of um, longitudinal uh, survey where we asked everybody how they felt about it and, and how it went. and. Uh, it seemed to be um, mostly positive, uh, not entirely. All oh, there were there were definitely suggestions, and so we took those suggestions. And over the course of the last year, we've kind of um, reinvent revisioned, I guess is the the term. Uh, Apple. So <laughs> we keep narrowing down the amount of time we're asking our folks to spend. First off. When I started in 2012, uh, the idea was to do Apple for a year, maybe two, and then we'd run out of directors, right? And so uh -huh. after that, we'd do, you know, every other year, every third year, however often it was needed to get these new directors. Um, yeah, in August of 2023, I went on four new director meetings. We had um, four new directors start in August. Uh, 
the turnover, we have never taken a year off. It has been every single year. Like and you talked about earlier, you thought, you know, with the, the, the three years everyone had to go to, you, so much turnover and, well, okay, that sounds bad. That, not, that makes it sound like every library is getting new direction all the time. It's not. It's just, we all, like here in Nebraska and you in Kansas, we have a lot of libraries in the state to um, maintain, keep up with, and mm -hmm. there's always, there's always staff changes. Um, I know here in Nebraska, we have 270 something public libraries. That's a lot of, there's gonna be staff changes. There's always gonna be somebody leaving, someone new coming in, somebody is you know, just moving from one library to another. Uh -huh. It's a whole new situation and a whole new um, new climate for them to, to deal with new people and whatnot. So people need, are gonna need this kind of thing as a constant refresher, uh -huh. update, whatever, yeah. I think one year, we did have few enough new directors that we actually opened it up to people who were um, came in after K Place ended, but before Apple started. Mm -hmm. So they were folks who kind of missed that library director. So we had a few not first year library directors that year, um, but that was that was a single year. After that, I mean, this year we only had fourteen total. Um, it was a very small year. It's the smallest year we've had so far. But next year, um, we're going to be begging for some more spots because, like I said, four, I keep mm -hmm. four uh, new director meetings in April or in August. So, and then I've been to a couple since then. So, um, there's a lot of new directors that are, are coming up who are going to need this information. Some of them, um, have more experience than others. Would you have actually in this year's class, uh, Marie Pico, who is the new director of the Topeka Shelby Public Library. She has, I wanna say 28 years of experience in libraries. Um, she has her MLS. Um, she is still going through Apple, um, not only for her just to kind of get mm -hmm. acclimated in the job, but she's also a really great resource for our other libraries. She can. She can help um, mentor. Networking and, and making those connections, that was def, yeah, I mean, that's not, that's part of it too. The, um, like when we do, like I said, using Moodle here, we do this uh, similar thing where they, they do all their discussions on the, on the, on the message boards and whatnot. And it's so, it is very interesting and I love reading because I, I, um, I'm the instructor, I suppose would be the word, it's not really instructor, it's mostly self-paced, but with us, um, guiding them along. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, very interesting to see the conversations when people who've done these things before who are, and ours is not really a new director thing, it's just anyone who wants to take these mm -hmm. classes, but that is something I think a lot of the libraries, they really, and then, you know, we require them to do a certain amount of conversation, but inevitably certain ones just keep going and going and going, and that's great, that's what you want, you keep talking about it, going back and forth, throwing out ideas. <laughs> exactly, and, you know, kind of not feeling so alone. Our, our big thing is that directors tend to be alone. They're, they can't really talk to their staff. Um, their closest peers are, in, you know, at least one town over. Um, they, they tend to be out there not really having a great support system. Sometimes um, in, in Kansas, we don't tend to have um, city libraries. A lot of our libraries are, the boundaries are cities, but they're not city departments and they don't have that kind of um, structure underneath them, they don't have other department heads they can talk to or uh, that kind of thing. So they are kind of, one of the things we have, we have found from various surveys and questions is that people do feel like they're, um, they're kind of thrown out there uh, with no safety net and Apple kind of helps them, not only gives them information, but gives them people that they feel they can, because they also get to know us as consultants, because we're always there for answering questions and, and things like that, so. And now is the new director of Topeka, are they from Nebraska, or not, sorry, from Kansas? Did they come from outside? I don't, I'm not sure. Um, Marie has been working in Topeka at the Topeka Public Library for a very long time, oh, so okay. I think she comes from Kansas. I okay. know, Kansas. We were here talking. in Nebraska, like we, something you were mentioning too was, um, how and this is something I, you, I hope everyone understands if we've got people here watching from nebraska a lot of the things robin is talking about are specific to kansas and this, you know, she's obviously making that very clear in kansas we do it this way um and when you do get library directors like for some of the bigger um systems or bigger libraries that come from out of state 
they need to know, be, learn, okay, this is how it was in your state and this, the library statutes there as mm -hmm. now in Nebraska or in Kansas is gonna be different. So being a new library director doesn't necessarily mean first time library director ever, but first time at this particular library in this particular situation in time. In this particular You're state. In this kind yeah. of training and knowledge to learn, okay, how do I do things now in the new state I've just moved to, you know, you know and um, yeah. Yeah, our new, um, the new director of Atchison, Kansas, uh, just came from Missouri. And I also come from Missouri. I worked in Missouri for 14 years in libraries before I moved to Kansas. And so when I emailed him, I said, you know, it, this is a very different environment than you're used to in Missouri. Mm -hmm. I would like to come and introduce you to the resources that you have available to you that you, that were, that were different than Missouri. In Missouri, right. they had a strong central public uh, state library, and then they have support organizations. MoreNet provides internet technology and, and different things like that. So it's the whole regional system thing is very different. So yeah, it's uh, he, despite the fact that he's been a director before, you know, he has library experience. Um, he's still going to have to go through Apple to learn those, uh, those Kansas uh, specific. Yeah. So, um, reimagining uh, Apple. We spent a year uh, talking about how to change Apple so that it was less um, burdensome for the libraries. And, you know, it was hard to make the case sometimes that an hour a month is, is burdensome, but that's with homework and, and all this. So what we have done is uh, we have loaded up that April kickoff retreat in Rock Springs. We are having, like I said, Gina is coming in and Gina Millsap from uh, formerly of Topeka Shawnee is coming to talk about um, librarianship and, and how to be a great librarian uh, director. But we've cut it down to two hours because we're also adding the community awareness, uh, kind of an informal evening on the couch discussion of ethics. Um, planning policies and board relations. Those all will be kind of tucked into that kickoff while we're all there together. And then um, at some point, we don't have exact dates, but I'm hoping August, uh, the library law webinar will happen. And that's a, that's a two hour webinar. And so what I'm planning to do in Northeast Kansas is have the folks in my region come to Nichols and we will watch it together and then we will discuss it afterwards so that they can ask questions either of the instructor or of us um, and get a, another dose of togetherness. <laughs> um, the webinar, uh, we're going to open it up again next year because there was so much um, mm -hmm. interest and things change every year. Uh, she had, she was talking about the two new laws that, uh, uh, we're just passed on pregnancy and um, making sure that people have pregnant people and people who have just given birth have a, a place to go to uh, express milk or, or breastfeed. So um, those were brand new this year. So she updates it every year. And so we're going to do that again. And then KLA usually is at the end of October. Like I said, this year, it's at the very beginning of November. But at KLA, what we're going to do is ask folks to go to sessions that deal with collection development, customer services, youth services, and advocacy, and then meet back on Moodle and give us takeaways so that each, everybody has to pick one or two of these topics, but then everybody talks, gets together on Moodle and, you know, post their takeaways, what they learned from the sessions, um, and kind of shares that information with everybody. So that's, while KLA itself is going to be together and um, will be in the same physical place, it the actual class happenings will happen on Moodle in, in a, uh, a discussion forum. Mm -hmm. And then in late January, early February, depending on on times we also have state statistics that are due in early February and those are a pain mm. so we don't want to again be too burdensome um, but budgeting is important and it needs to be done at the beginning of the year so Eric Norris uh, the director of the Manhattan Public Library is going to do a two-hour session 
on budgeting in Kansas. And that will be, um, that'll be interesting. His, uh, Laura Devon has been doing it for the past 12 years. We did drop a couple of topics. Uh, technology is no longer uh, included in there. Really? We, yeah, we decided after uh, the pandemic that people have kind of, what we were doing was teaching them how to connect and almost everybody has at least basic Zoom skills these days. By um, now, yeah. <laughs> uh, and so we have, you know, that may be in, in KLA, if there are, I usually do at least one technology session uh, uh, at KLA. This year I'm doing one on, on uh, artificial intelligence and chat GPT. So if they want to pick up technology, that might be an elective, but um, it's not a requirement. So it's, it's going to be an interesting, see how that, uh, see how that works out. But um, that was, we, there were a couple of things that we, you know, you can't keep adding. <laughs> Eventually you run out of time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm sure, yeah, I mean, yeah, you said based on surveys and what people are looking for. Um, absolutely. Yeah. One of the um, one of the questions that we ask every year is what were the most important um, sessions for you? And library law and budgeting are always right up there. Uh, customer service sometimes uh, makes it collection development often, uh, but you know, technology almost never made it. <laughs> and that's you know as, as people get, you know, as technology becomes more and more ingrained in our lives, it just becomes less mm. necessary to, to go through it. So we'll, we'll see how this goes next year. This is brand new for 2024. Um, this year, we're still doing the webinars each month. We just did um, the HR webinar actually in September. And, uh, and so we're still doing the class the way we've done it for the last 10 years. Uh, this year but next year this new schedule will will take off and that yeah. will be apple we get the same response as you all i think um the one here for our classes and when we do encompass live shows youth, anything youth and teen services and collection development and cataloging the numbers just go through the roof for both of those it's mm -hmm. i don't know if it's just there's so many people that do that work or there's so lacking in training for it I, I don't know this doesn't seem like it but um those for here are the the biggies yeah uh, but then we know from the questions we get asked do you really need customer service and uh library law training so we're gonna make you take do, we're gonna put that out there too we can tell <laughs> <laughs> yeah i get um i get so many questions from directors about how to help their staff become better at customer service and so it's a real um, Savannah Ball from the Wichita Public Library. Um, she does our customer service webinar. She used to be a system consultant and she moved over to, to working in Wichita. She still does it. The vast majority of our sessions are taught by system, either system consultants or former system consultants. Um, like uh, Eric Norris was the state librarian for a little while and then he was the director of North Central and now he's the director of Manhattan mm -hmm. um, so he's never actually been a system consultant but just about everybody else uh, has been at one point or another a system consultant and they are uh, providing their their expertise for free they're doing it as a uh, you know because as part of their job to help uh, library directors in, in Kansas the HR webinar we do pay and the kickoff, motivational kickoff, we pay for. The way the financing works, and this is going to continue, um, is that each uh, each year we charge $450 to $500 for tuition for the year, and that pays for the Rock Springs kickoff, um, the two um, outside uh, speakers that we pay for, any extras, you know, if we have something at KLA, a little party or whatever. You know that kind of thing um but they're not paid by the directors the systems pay those so if we have nine people in Neckles taking apple we're paying you know what nine thousand five hundred dollars <laughs> at 500 bucks each 
so um, the uh, the systems pay for it. So we do require that the library boards sign off on the directors taking the time to um, to do this because we're we're funding it for them. Um, and then for us at Nichols, it's part of the uh, the accreditation process. If you have not passed Apple uh, within you know a couple three years of your uh, being in the uh, in the position, you're no longer meeting all of your accreditation requirements. Um, even if you have an MLS, even if you have lots of experience with libraries, um, this is this is something we think is really important. So we've made it part of our our accreditation process. So that's accreditation for the the director, the person, or for the, the library. library itself. The library. Okay. Same thing yeah, we have here. We have have our our libraries are accredited, and our library staff get certif certified. Uh, yeah. No, we don't do certification of, of library staff in Kansas, but we do accredit libraries. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the things that we require here in, in Nichols is that you've gone through Apple in order to um, ensure your library's accreditation. Yeah. Um, so there is one system that does not um, support new directors. They don't, they weren't interested in joining us, um, <laughs> which is fine. But uh, this year, oh, Sorry, I forgot to turn my phone off. <laughs> Rookie mistake. <laughs> um, <laughs> the uh, um, so the the one system that's not joining in, and basically what what I do as the manager of Apple is um, every year I get totals from each system and I send them invoices and they pay back. And our Nichols. Uh, business office manages writing checks and keeping track of money and doing all the stuff that I'm really bad at. So, um, which is lovely, but, uh, uh, because we do have that one system that was not interested in joining us, uh, the PLS, which is the public library section of KLA mm -hmm. has started a scholarship for, um, up to three students a year who are not supported by their system to join Apple. And so we have, we have somebody from that. It, the way it worked out this year, they voted on how to spend the money a week and a half before I needed final numbers for Rock Springs. Oh. <laughs> so uh, we only got one oh. out of the three uh, scholarships, but next year we'll have five scholarships. So, um, so that is is expanding the reach a little bit. We can now officially say we uh, are are training all of Kansas new directors, um, and so they just make their application. PLS uh, approves them or not, and sends that information on to me. And uh, they are students just like any other um, mm -hmm. in their uh, in their cohort. Uh, we have had cohorts of up to forty some people. Um, which is at that point, some of the staff have to spend the night at the hotel in Junction City because there's not enough beds. <laughs> um, but uh, this year, our, our cohort is 14. Uh, next year, I think it's going to be another bumper crop. But, you know, however that works. But um, the, the basic thing is it doesn't cost the directors anything. If they decide to go to KLA, we do have a stipend that we can send them. Of course, they can, and most systems have continuing education grants uh, to pay for um, state conference uh, attendance, but then they can also get um, a little money from us and get some of that money to attend KLA so that it kind of makes it easier for them to go and attend the sessions and uh, and then report back by a Moodle on what they learned. So, um, we do have a question while you're on this slide here. I, I sure I just saw that it had come in and um, it is on here. So, wants to know, and I, you may have mentioned this and I, I missed it. Um, who do you use for the library law session? Who is teaching that? Or that is um, Richard Brooklyn. He is um, the director of the Southwest Kansas Library System. Uh, he was a consultant, a system consultant, uh, for a while until he got promoted. Uh, he has also been a library director for many, many years prior to working in the system, and he has 
he keeps he's part of our um, government governmental affairs committee um, for KLA and he has a pretty good grasp of um, the statutes and the legislature and how things work and so basically what he covers is like I said just you know Kansas statute Specifically um, to Kansas, yeah. Yeah, specific to Kansas, the the things that um, that Kansas allows and doesn't allow uh, for library boards and and libraries, and then he talks uh, quite a bit about ad advocacy in the sense of um, talking to your local legislators and getting them familiar with your library before they have to vote on <laughs> on um, something that has that affects your library so he talks quite a bit about um, how to do those kind of things thank you um that's interesting because that's very similar to what we have here we just did um a library law uh session and there's been multiple ones in around the state at various events things too over the last uh, year or yeah, here too. Um, and it is one of our, we have regional systems here in Nebraska. They are not anything that libraries join. They're more like outreach here from the commission or boots on the ground, I like to describe them as. And one of our system directors, Scott Childers, who's the director of the Southeast Library System is kind of our expert on library law and Open Meetings Act law, because um, he's just taking that on as um, his thing. And yeah. he you know, also was a previous director at libraries too, but he um, is the one who's our, you know, who I go to sometimes with, what do you think about this question? This mm -hmm. <laughs> and how would we, you know. How do you this interpret question? this? I mean, you know, none of us are lawyers. Um, oh, no, so no, yes, everything we do is prefaced with the, I am prefacing with this, with the caveat that I am not a lawyer, nothing I say can be taken as uh, legal advice. You may want to consult a lawyer if you really are in a legal situation, but yeah. here's what we know as with, through our experience and working through the laws with other libraries and um, like as he, said, he said himself, his own previous experience. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's pretty much how we do it. We have Richard come in and he shares um, his, his vast amount of experience with Kansas libraries and, and uh, how the library law affects the operation of Kansas Library. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Well, there's my email address again. Um, I'm open for questions or. Yeah, all right. Yeah, awesome. Um, thank you. Uh, is any, uh, yeah, if anybody has any questions, we still have um, about 10 minutes left of the session here. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so if you do have any questions you want to ask of Robin uh, or myself, uh, if you're a Nebraska person, of course, uh, go ahead and type into the question section of our GoToWebinar interface and we'll answer all your questions we have here. You can always reach out to Robin later um, or myself here in Nebraska. I am um, generally as library development director and the person that our libraries would come to for um, the legal advice, uh, board advice. We have other various staff here in the commission that would answer questions about other things. Um, and in and our uh, CE training session. So this was this is great to hear about what you're doing there, Robin. And, um, and it's it's always good, you know every state is trying to get their directors up to speed on things. Right. It's hard. <laughs> it is probably one of the you know the hardest thing is like what do you do to help the new library directors not be like terrified of this thing that they just. <laughs> especially if they've never done it before um and we do here in nebraska have lots of um non-mls library directors actually most of them are not um right small rural that's not what they're going to do they're never going to go and get a, a degree um it's just not a thing but we offer training and ours is the basic skills classes with um, ongoing training throughout the year of all the different things that you might need to know to, to do your job um and it's not specific to directors it's for any library staff that want to things um yeah so we do, actually, yeah we do much the same thing um we have i think 300 and 300 plus public libraries in kansas uh and there are depending on how you count them 45 50 in northeast kansas so uh of those i, I would guess the vast majority are um, are led by people who do not have an mls and so that's kind of what we've feel at Nichols we're providing uh, is that background knowledge so they can call us and say hey I'm not sure exactly what to do here we mm -hmm. can 
you know, I have 28 years of experience in libraries and, and the MLS. So uh, mm -hmm. quite often when people call and say, ah, what do I do? Uh, I, have a, mm -hmm. I have a, you know, I've seen this before and this worked. So, so yeah. And oftentimes yeah. it's just needing the, um, the hand holding and saying, it's okay, you got this, you are doing the right thing. Yeah. Uh, don't yeah. sweat it. You're, you're working on the right track. Yeah. I had a librarian who would call me almost weekly with, uh, <laughs> well, Robin, it's time to, to bounce some stuff off of you. And I almost never had to come up with a solution. She was great. She had mm -hmm. it all under control, but she'd, she'd be like, so am I right in thinking this? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and that's that, we said networking and get people to meet each other and, and talk to another director and say, hey, what did, would you do? Yeah. Exactly. Um, so we do have some comments and questions coming through. Uh, awesome. Let's see. Um, Okay, this is a long one, sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, Dan. All right, we'll start with, uh, I think this first one will help into the second one, so I'm gonna do this in this other order. Okay, all right, so this is someone, um, Tony, who's a library director here in Nebraska, and um, I'm just gonna read what, what you put in there. Um, it says, in my first year as director, I reached out to our regional library system. I remember telling them that, um, that I thought I was in over my head. With the help of Central Plains Library System and the Nebraska Library Commission, we became accredited and have received grants to help our library grow. Yay, um, we're happy to do that. I have learned a lot of useful information from the basic skills classes. It is nice to have this support system for new directors. Mm -hmm. So more just of a comment there. So thank you so much, Tony. I'm so glad we were able to help you. I, I, I work with Tony a lot, yes, on various things. <laughs> Um, but so that is the, yeah, that is what we have here. That same kind of, um, trying to get our libraries to do, just do, do good and do the best they can for their community and their, and their, and the citizens in their area. Right. The whole, the whole purpose of the regional systems is to provide, um, to support libraries in providing the best possible library service for Kansas citizens. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. why we're here. So. Yeah, yeah. And whatever it takes. All right. And then the other question that these actually both came at the exact same time um, says, is Apple available only to Kansas librarians? Yeah, unfortunately it is. It is the Kansas <laughs> we program. are very Kansas specific. I'm not sure it would be as valuable to anybody else, but if you are a Nebraska librarian, Krista has resources for you. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, and the reason we were putting this here on our show, I mean, Nebraska, the, the Encompass Live is the Nebraska Library Christian show, but it is, we're a national show that anybody can come to and watch. Um, it is a good example, I think, of the kind of things that train that can be done or the kind of things you would want to learn about as a, as a library director. So um, if you're not in Kansas, look for something like this in your state. Um, here in Nebraska, which this um, person is, I can tell from their email that they are here from Nebraska. Um, we don't have this kind of a, a, we don't have, our program is not like the same thing. We have a basic skills program here in Nebraska where we, it's for, it's free. We provide it free to any library staff person at any type of library in the state or, um, and, or any citizen of Nebraska actually who's interested in becoming a librarian. We're very, free and open about it. <laughs> um, it doesn't cost you anything except for your time. It's all online courses done in Moodle. Um, and actually, since we're talking about it, I will, um, let me pop over to, all right, I'm gonna bring presenter control to my screen. Sure. To show you all, is it there, is it there? There we go. Uh, do move that over there, okay. So, uh, on our Library Commission website, nlc.nebraska.gov, uh, we have education, and there is uh, all, lots of different things here that are education related, but basic skills classes is on here. And you will see we push this out when on our social media too when new classes are up for uh, open for registration. So if you look at our uh, Facebook or uh, Twitter, Instagram, you'll see just recently a new one went up saying here's the next class that's open. And this is a series of courses. As you can see, all the topics we have here, collection management, community and library, uh, communication, customer service, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then there are some elective courses down here. Now, anyone who wants to, uh, as you can see here, Nebraska residents or um, people employed by Nebraska Library, so this is Nebraska specific, um, 
you can take any of these courses you want to. You can take them just because you want to learn more about that particular topic, or you can take them for the purpose of become getting your um, certification, um, public library and certification. That'll be for public library directors. So uh, we have our public library staff. Sorry, it's not specific only, it's not limited to directors. So if you're a Nebraska library um, employee of any level, um, or a library board member, if you just want to, you know, um, it's mainly for you know, running the library, but you can take any of these classes you want to. Um, but if you want to do it for the purposes of earning your certification, which does feed into your accreditation here in Nebraska, we do have public librarian certification. Um, if you, and then if you, uh, for, in order for a library to be accredited, the director at a minimum has to be certified and then you can earn more points towards your accreditation the more staff, other staff people that are also certified. Um, so uh, these classes are done throughout the year. Let me see the schedule here. And at the same time, pretty much in the same time, the same order every single year. So it's just rotate. So every January, you know you can take communication. Um, and then right after that, it'll follow customer service, library governance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, through all the classes. So to become certified, you do six basic classes and then the seven electives, but you um, and you have a three-year time period to get all of that done. So you don't have to do all of this in one year, all one, like one giant year long <laughs> classwork. Uh, you split it up between amongst your three years. Um, but if you're just taking the classes for your own education, if you are like uh, the program and outreach librarian, you just want to pop in and do that one, do it. You, you don't have to do it for the purpose of becoming certified. Um, you can take any of these classes just because you want to learn a little bit more. Um, and there's our, at the end of the year, we've got our uh, children's and teens class. So so this is what we offer, which would, I guess, be as, as similar to, in Nebraska, what we offer, which would be as similar to what um, Apple in Kansas is doing. Um, it's just an ongoing program. Holly Duggan is our CE coordinator in charge of this. It's all done within Moodle. She is working on putting some, uh, she is testing out doing things in Niche Academy. Have you used that at all, uh, Robin? Um, I have not, uh, although I'm working on some classes to go in Niche Academy now. I don't have them done and um, haven't really played with the platform yet. So <laughs> yeah, she's, she's experimenting with it too. Yeah, I think she did a communications class is in there as a self-paced class. Uh -huh. Uh, we're mm -hmm. trying to do more of that too. We've gotten a lot of requests for, well, I can't do the particular class at that time of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, help. <laughs> so trying to do <laughs> some more that are self-paced that you can do at any time. Uh, mm -hmm. So you don't necessarily need a um, at any time of the year. I mean, you can see here we do have a self-paced intro to cataloging class. That just means there's it's an it's a month long, and also the communication one. Um, there's no specific instructor there, uh, Holly does monitor it, of course. Um, but those are, you have a whole month for those and just do it on your own more so. But she's thinking of more self-paced as, here's just a class you can do at any time of the year when it's convenient to you. And that's something she's working on right now. This is what we've got. So if you're a Nebraska librarian, look at this. And um, this is where you can get that same kind of training as what uh, Robin was just talking about in uh, Kansas. <laughs> yeah, and if yeah, you're not in Nebraska or Kansas, check out your own state, um, either state library, um, if you have regional systems, uh, whatever you have, there's probably something in your state that is similar. Uh, they may call it something different, uh, like you know, yours is very specific for library directors, ours is just basic skills for any library staff person. Uh, look around and I'm sure you can find something if you're not, yeah. Mm -hmm. 